the requirement for it was the same as the requirement for the Osprey. In other words, you, you needed to haul troops, and you needed to haul uh, military equipment, you needed long range, and yet you needed to go land out in the forest somewhere. And you needed to operate off of small ships, not just aircraft carriers. The deficiencies on this airplane compared to the Osprey was it, it was a lot noisier uh, because the disc loading, four small propellers have a, have a smaller area than the two big rotors on the Osprey. So this one, even more than the Osprey, would kick up rocks if you landed in gravel and so on. And it was really noisy. The advantages, though, is this airplane had a lot more range than the Osprey, and it, and it was 100 knots faster. And that was in the 60s, so that's amazing. 1965, when I was on it, I think it flew first flight in 63, back in Dallas. This was my first project, very first project. When I got to Edwards, I was working with about 35, 37 people. And uh, the first six months that I was there, five of them were dead out of 35. We'd go to the chapel and have a memorial service. It seemed like every week. Those were not all airplane accidents. Uh, one of them was a motorcycle accident, but the rest of them were, were aircraft accidents. Um, it, it was something I wasn't aware was dangerous. You didn't learn that in college. And I'm wondering, you know, I, I'm, I'm wondering if I'll survive this career. Because, you know, I was flying, doing spins in the F-4. And uh, I was uh, uh, dropping maximum payload weights at low altitude out of the C-130. So I was doing things that were considered hazardous, such that on the days that I would fly, I would get a 25% bonus in my uh, salary. They actually overlap. So there's no portion of the wing that's not, that doesn't get the high velocity air from the propellers. This was an absolutely amazing airplane, especially considering that it was designed with slide reels and had no CAD at all.